Rachel Fascio and I'm Stacy Shirell. We've got 20 years combined experience as therapists and too many years of relationship mistakes you'll want to learn from. We share our ups and downs with a therapeutic twist so the relationship in your life thrives. Let us be your aha moment that you can take back to your own couch. This is the Decoding Couples Podcast. Even though we are therapists, we are not your therapists. This podcast is meant for educational and entertainment purposes only. Welcome back to our episode, Separation Saved Our Marriage. Now, this episode is going to be a little different from the other 24 episodes because we have a very special guest with us, and that is the one and only Gianni Fascio. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, you have such a good voice. Thank oh, you, yeah. I guess. I yeah. guess we've never heard Jenny's <laughs> podcast voice. Got a good ear? Yeah. Okay. There you okay. go. So today is a long-awaited episode. I feel like we've talked about wanting to film this episode from before the podcast was even Yeah. A reality. So if you have been following along the decoding couples family story, um, <laughs> then you would know that Rachel and Gianni went through a separation period in the beginning of 2020 that ultimately ended with their marriage being absolutely stronger than ever. And from the minute that <laughs> the high fives that <laughs> Rachel brought this up and was transparent about it on our Instagram community. The DMs flooded and flooded and haven't stopped flooding about wanting to know the details of their separation, the rules of their separation. How did it happen? When did it happen? Tell us everything. People are nosy. People are nosy. And I think it's because nobody really transparently talks about this. So this is going to be an incredible episode. We're going to dive into it. We're all going to cry. It's going to be phenomenal. I know. I put mascara on and I was like, was that a mistake? Probably. Maybe. We shall see. <laughs> All right. So a little bit of background on your favorite couple here, Rachel and I think Gianni. it's your favorite couple. <laughs> I know. It's true. <laughs> All right. So a little bit of background on them. They met November 8th, 2009. Had a lovely dating period. Um, married in 2014. Mm-hmm. Had two beautiful, wonderful, sweet, always listen to everything you say children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Since okay. then. And then, like most long-term relationships, things got a little rocky. And then they got a little bit rockier. Mm-hmm. And then in February of 2020, Rachel expressed to Gianni that she wanted to separate. So a separation happened. We will get into it. And then another huge event happened, COVID. Mm -hmm. So a global pandemic definitely threw a wrench into, I I imagine, what you saw. Yes, what you saw the separation (laughs) being. Um, But ultimately, you know, you guys worked through the separation during COVID. And didn't really have a choice. Yeah. yeah, (laughs) And here and here we are. So that's the short background. And we will we'll get into it. Cool. Did I miss anything important? No. No. Okay. Definitely not. Okay. (laughs) Not yet. (laughs) Not yet. Okay. Okay. So let's just start with what it is like for you both to be here and talking about such a sensitive and vulnerable time publicly. For me, it's uh, a little weird because I'm not very, I don't share a lot of stuff on social media. Yeah. You guys are the opposite. You guys are literally living on uh, Instagram, all that stuff. So yeah. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'll get through it. Yeah, it is nerve wracking. <laughs> and all, in all fairness, we come on here and like Stacy says, like black out, like we just do our thing and just <laughs> do all the. So I think to watch you be a little nervous is so normal, even just like sharing like and being recorded and it gets played to a bunch of people. Even when we talk about it at home, I think it still is hard for us. Like it's not something that comes easily I don't feel like we talk about it and it's like so far away it feels like a different marriage which it was because the marriage that we're in is different but I feel like it's still hard even when we talk about it at home a thousand percent and you were part of it too I mean you knew the good the bad the ugly I remember hanging out and you would know Mm -hmm. what an asshole I was all the hurtful things that I said and I had to basically be like yeah I'm cool I'm here like that didn't happen last night so it's very for me it was like you knew what was going on you knew all the bad things but you still were like I like G he's a cool guy um 
So for me, that was a little bit hard because you knew everything that was going on and I had to put on this mm -hmm. front like, we're cool, but you're like, I want to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that Stacy feels murder. No, but what I mean is she's like, yeah. you hurt my girl. Like, yeah. you know. Uh, I'm going to be nice to you. Yeah, but, like, but I know. Yeah. I so see you. That's also yeah. hard because I have a lot of pride and mm -hmm. I am not, um, I'm not that the asshole that I was during this period of time. And you also yeah. don't have to keep referring to yourself that way. No, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't an easy no. time. Yeah. And I was going through stuff that I didn't want to share because I was afraid. I didn't know how to ask for help. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> are the emotions coming already uh, now? No, oh, no, my no. God. You two are already crying. No, I'm not. Yeah. It's just, oh, yeah. It's emotional, yeah, though. Yeah, to talk about our feelings, remember? I I'll talk about them. You know, yeah. everyone knows that my feelings are buried deep down, and they just <laughs> take a little longer to come out. <laughs> so, Gianni, how is it as, as a man yeah. to talk about some of these more like vulnerable things and the relational stuff to say, I was a certain way and I have to own that and I have pride and my ego and all of that. Like, what is that like, I guess, sitting down and being like, all right, cool, let's be vulnerable about your relationship and your stuff. I just think that uh, I'll speak for myself and I think it's very hard for me to go to Rach or go to someone and say, hey, I'm struggling. I... Yeah. Uh, I don't want to show that because the second I show that, it's a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in a Latin family. You don't talk about your feelings. You go to work, you come home, and then you just keep going. Yeah. There's no, A, I had a really bad day, or I'm struggling with this, or I'm doing that. It was when you get home, all those feelings are shut off, and you yeah. just go on. Yeah, and I think that that... What was what a lot of what was going on before. So before I said I wanted a separation, you were traveling. I remember that last yeah. trip, there was like very little contact between us. I mean, I was working a ton. Yeah. I was like always at the office. Um, I was hanging out with friends, I think way more than I usually would. I was definitely finding every excuse, but I think we were both shoving down a lot. Like and sure. there was just no more. I felt like really... Um, I don't know how you felt before, but like I felt very like lonely, but like angry lonely because I felt like you didn't see it. And what you're sharing is that you were just like, there's no room, there's no option for me to even see it or experience it. You just go like, this is your job as like a man, you do this, you provide here, you stay strong. And a lot of what you were kind of maybe doing like heads down, shove it down. I experienced is like, he doesn't care. Mm. Um, you know, he isn't doesn't see that we're disconnected. And I think that, I don't know, maybe before you left for your last work trip was also when we finally like stopped having sex too, which yeah. was maybe when you were like, oh, something's wrong. Because self-admittedly, I kept having sex even when I didn't want to. And that's not to say like there was no like forcing or anything like that. I mean that I was just like, well this is what I'm supposed to do as a wife and a partner. So let me just do this because this is like the last normal thing that we should be doing in a relationship. Yeah. And when we talk, when we really were in like the thick of it, you had mentioned that was one of the things that threw you off because I would say, hey, I'm upset or things aren't good, uh, you know, up until I said I want a separation, but we were still intimate. So right yeah. before, maybe like a couple months before, I feel like maybe December, I finally like cut that off and you were like, hmm, yeah, yeah. something is amiss. So, so, okay. So let, let me like, let's slow it down and, br and bring it back a little bit. So I'm hearing that there was just like emotional disconnect, um, for whatever reason. And then intimacy ended up stopping right before, but were there any significant or major events that led you to your decision, Rachel, or do you feel like this was just a slow burn over time that you just ended up being unhappy? I think it was both. I think there was a, it was a slow burn. We were fighting a lot. We would fight about everything. I would feel like I was walking on eggshells. Um, you know, I think you felt similarly, but I don't want to speak for you. I felt like everything turned into a fight. Like there was just so much tension and we were just exhausted all the time. And we had two young kids. I mean, our daughter was five at the time. Mm -hmm. She had just turned five. Our son had just turned two. That's a really hard time also in like just parenthood life. But 
We were fighting a lot. I think that I felt like you were pretty aggressive um, in terms of just like verbally. Like I think that when, especially like when you would drink, I got just like a lot of like verbal garbage and like verbal abuse that I honestly didn't even realize was verbal abuse until my therapist at the time I would like recount um, to her because I said, I want to go to couples therapy. And John was like, I'm not going. You can go on your own. So I went on my own, which is what we tell a lot of people. And I'll never forget, she was sitting there and she looks at me and she goes, yeah, that's that's verbal abuse. And I was like genuinely shocked. So I think for me, that tipping point was, I mean, I'll never forget it. One night I was on the stairs. He was definitely kind of verbally going at me. And I was trying to point out all these ways that I was changing. And he looked at me and he goes like, I don't care. He's like, I'm not going to change. Like, I'm trying not to change. I just remember feeling like something broke in me. Like, Mm -hmm okay, like this is not going to get better. Like he was full on telling me, this is what you get. Yes, is it from a place of hurt? Yes, were you protecting yourself? But in that moment, I always felt felt so crazy. Like how I felt wasn't good enough or like it wasn't a reason enough to be upset because there were all these other amazing parts about him. And also no one ever saw that side of you come out, especially with the alcohol. Um, but sitting, I'll never forget sitting on those stairs was like, I was like, oh, okay, I think I need to go. But what prompted me to actually make the call to you, which was super shitty in retrospect. And how long in between like the sitting uh, on the stairs moment? a couple months for okay. me, like probably a couple months. Yeah. Um, I just knew like something shattered in me then. Yeah. And then, um, I, I mean, this client doesn't even know this, but I watched a client be super brave in session and she was like engaged to her partner and they were doing really well. And she just looked at him and she was like, I know that like, you're not who I'm supposed to be with. And she was just so brave. And I remember being like, I should be brave like that. Like, it was just this like little push. And I literally called you on my break. I called John on my break and said, I want a separation, which was a fucked up thing to do um, over the phone. To say the least. To say the least. You were at work. Was at work. And um, then I I called you and then I called my mom. And then I went to Rite Aid and bought a lot of makeup for my client that I had to see after that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What is, you, is it hard to hear it all go no, back? No, it's, um, it's always... Uh, Salt on a on a wound. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So even hearing about Rachel talk to the about the events that led up to her decision, how did you experience that? Like, did you know that that thought was building in Rachel? Or like how were you processing? I mean, I knew she was like tired. Like I knew she was, you know, or I should say. That for us in our relationship, I knew that it was at a low point. I never thought of divorce, separation. It's just not a, it wasn't a vocabulary. Yeah. Even for my family. Um, so I knew that there was something wrong, but I just was like, we'll get over it. Like, we'll work it through. And obviously it was the opposite. And I knew that I was drinking a lot. I was alone, like trying to be alone and she was working a lot. And by the time we would talk, it would be like nine, 10 o'clock at night and I Mm -hmm. wouldn't want to talk. Oh, and Lyra. Yeah. You were working. She was working like seven, eight, nine. And then we would get together at 10. And by that time I was drunk and tired and Mm -hmm. I didn't want to talk and she would want to talk. And yeah, I was just bad person. I was in a bad spot. I even remember one time we had plans with some of our friends and the night before we got into a fight. And I remember the next morning she was in the shower and I was like, if you're not going to change your attitude, then I'm not going to fucking go to the zoo. And she was like, are you serious? And I was like, yeah, I'm serious. Like if you're not going to change your attitude, mind you, we got into a fight the night before. I was just like, yeah, get over it. Yeah, like these swings, like yeah. you were hurt or you felt like it was a way to kind of, I don't know what the word is, but just like, yeah, get, have some control because like we would have these big blow ups, things would be said. And then it was like your way of like putting your foot down or trying to feel maybe in control of the situation. And it would just be, I don't know, I just started like, I, I feel like I started just like giving up because those would then come out of nowhere too. Like we had fought the night before 
and then it just wasn't over. So that's what it would feel like, these ups and downs yeah. of just, like, intent. it was just exhausting. But I think you felt me pulling away. Yeah. And to be clear, like, I would say words, and until I went to therapy, I didn't realize the damage that the words can do. And yeah. it could be a, something as, like, I don't care about you, like, whatever your feelings are lame. I don't want to listen to you. I don't want to change while those words might seem like, oh, they're not a big deal, but they are because yeah. she's like then shutting down, shutting down. He doesn't care. He doesn't like this. Obviously, it wasn't all nice. Yeah. Um, there were some other things that were said. And yeah, I just, I would say things because I was hurt inside and I felt alone and I was struggling with my own depression. And I was like, I don't care. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to lash out. Yeah. I'll say yeah. the words, get over it. And it's really effed up to sit here and and realize that the words that, that I was spewing were damaging and hurtful. Did you, do you remember thinking that like they truly just didn't, like wouldn't have that severe of an impact or was it more like, well, I know, like, I mean, this kind of sounds fucked up, but like, I know I can hurt her, but she's going to stay because she's my wife and like, that's what yeah. we do. Well, they say that you usually hurt the person that you love the most yeah. and- yeah, I mean, she has been, sorry, she has been with me through a lot of other things in my life, you know, marriages, deaths, separations. Um, so we've been through a lot, and she was, at times, the only person that was by my side. And, yeah, and I just always thought she would be by my side, and... Oh, fuck you. You got me to cry. <laughs> oh, you're going to get me to cry. You don't, don't cry. Uh, okay, should we take a break and hug each other? No, okay. no. Okay. No, I, th yeah. Okay. Like, and to be in, in complete transparency, too, while you were kind of going on your, like, verbal, you know, degrading and that kind of stuff, like, that also made me, looking back now, like, hypercritical of you. Yeah. Um, I became, I think, like, more controlling than I already am, which, <laughs> if you can imagine, <laughs> is a, but in in reality, like, I was, anything you messed up, like, I let him know. Yeah. Any, any normal thing that now is such a benefit of the doubt, like, it's fine, you're having a bad day, I forgot this, I would come down on him with, like, enjoyment because I was like, oh, you're hurting me all the time here's how I can make you feel small. So I also want to make it clear that it wasn't just like one way. Like I was really, I was really cold. Yeah, um, but I was also hurting No, you. I know. Yeah. I just think it's so often when we talk about separation, it's like in our society in general is very like binary. Yeah. Like one person's worse. And it's like, it's always multiple people. Yes. Sure. In cases of abuse, like I am not responsible at all for the way you were treating me when you were being verbally abusive, but I'm taking responsibility for the other parts of it. And like, I do remember just completely denying even like basic needs of yours. I'm not talking about sex, but just like, I would be like, no, I have to do this for the kids. Like any way I could kind of like poke yeah. or do a, what's that called? Like cut by a thousand, you know, paper, cuts paper cut whatever. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Death that's how, yes. Cause I wasn't the one who was overtly, yeah. going big and getting angry. Yeah. And so that was also happening, which would also make things even worse. But I felt like that was the only control I had to hurt you or yeah. like slow you down. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think it's important to talk about both of those sides because it it, it becomes cyclical, right? Um, there's typically, or there's rarely ever a time when someone is all good and all yeah. bad. We just don't we don't Rachel's always work good. that way. No. <laughs> this is lies, 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 lies. Anyone that listens to this podcast knows that. <laughs> okay, so going back to then that phone call yeah. at work, yeah. which I was in the office with you that day. That was a tough one. Yeah, were you there when I came back? Because I did it in a parking lot of Trader Joe's. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, what was your, if you can remember, kind of your initial thoughts, like your reaction being at work and getting this phone call? Like, did you think she was just being angry and over the top? Did you know she was serious? Like, what? I mean, again, we weren't in the best point. And we, ha I mean, even though we were fighting a lot, we were also having hard conversations. And when she called me and was like, I had a session and I watched this woman be brave and I need a separation. I was like, what the fuck? 
I I think my I, my initial reaction was like, how do I you know I want like the accountant for all our banking stuff, all this stuff. She's going to... He was, like, protective. Oh, I was oh like, yeah. He was like, let's go. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, fine. So mm-hmm. I went to my boss, and I was like, this is what happened. He's like, you need to go home, figure it out. And I said, okay. We got home, and I immediately was just, like, angry and yeah. crying. And You beat me home. You were like, yeah, right? You called yeah. me, and you're like, I'm going home. I want access to all the bank accounts. Which you've had. You just don't know where the the passwords are. (laughs) And yeah, you were like, I'm going home. Maybe I canceled a client. I think you did. Yeah, I think I canceled my clients. And then I went home. We asked my mom to come. Yeah, so she took the kids. And I remember just crying. And and I was was angry in a very different way. Like it was an anger. Like uh, it wasn't like... Even the the nasty, it was kind of like, all right, well, how are we going to live separate? How are we going to deal with the kids? How are we? Um, yeah, you went yeah. to like logistics really quickly. Yeah, I was like, okay, where can I move to yeah. be close to the kids? How am I going to tell everybody that, you know, we're separating, that this and this? And, and again, what's even hard is that like you have to go to your friends. Like I even told her like, I'm going to lose your parents and I love her parent very much. Um, and I was just like, I don't know how I'm going to go on with my life like this because I love them very much. I love her. I I know she loves my parents and my family and it's just like heartbreaking. I was like, fuck, yeah. what am I going to do? Yeah. Yeah. But it came out as anger. Like it wasn't. But it was almost like a sadness anger. Yeah. Like I was angry at her, but it yeah. was a very different not calming, but I was just like, my life is f- falling apart. Like I'm, I don't, I don't know how I'm gonna move forward. And I think that was the, the hardest thing for me because, I then realized that. Without her, I'm not complete, and I was like, "Fuck! I'm gonna lose the person that I love." And how am I gonna fix this? How, how am I? How is there gonna be a guarantee for me that if I'm gonna work on myself, work on this, that she's going to be by my side. And I don't know that. And I think that was the scariest part for me because I was realizing I'm going to lose Rach. But I didn't need, I didn't see any of that. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, it was so much anger. Yeah. Um, I remember we came home, we told my mom to take the kids and you were like, okay, I just want a divorce. I don't want a separation. You were like, I'm just divorcing you. Yeah. And I was just like, no, we should really try a separation. And you were like, no, I just want a divorce. You're like, what's the point? You're just going to leave anyway. Mm. Um, I had no idea you were like all that hurt. Or you were even thinking about it at that point. Yeah. But I think something you said is such a common response that I hear from men. I'm sure women feel this way too of like, okay, so I'm looking at losing everything. Right. And you're asking me to do something right. while not promising me that mm. you're going to stay. Yeah. And I think, like, looking at that in the eye, like, that reality of, like, okay, so I do a bunch of work on myself, yeah. but then for what? And I think that hesitation in people is almost like a fork in the road. Yep. Where then you get to choose, okay, I'm going to do the work anyway, which is what you chose. But I think a lot of people without that guarantee, with the unknown, say, I'm, I got to protect myself more. And that's where things yeah. end. Oh, well, yeah. You're in such a raw place. Like you're talking about all those thoughts are going through your head. You feel so untethered that you're like, why the F am I going to put in the work? Mm-hmm. Why am I going to guarantee that I might feel even worse? Yeah. You go into protection mode. You're... Re- you know, reserving, but it was also one of the most, I don't know what the right word is, like empowering or meaningful things that you did because I remember, and this is skipping forward, this is after we decided to like try and work it out, but you were like, I uh, I remember you saying like, I'm going to do all this work and you might leave me still. And I was like, yes, like I, I, there is zero guarantee because we would have a couple good days yeah. and then we would have a really hard, horrible conversation and it would like trigger all the wounds and the hurt. And he was like, but I feel like I'm doing this. So you could just leave. And I was like, absolutely. Like I, I need that to be, that is still my truth. This is yeah. still a very questionable situation. And I think the most empowering, like loving thing in that moment that you did, you were like, okay, 
Like, yeah, okay. Well, I even didn't it, really have an. I mean, not that I didn't have an option. Choice. Yeah. I did, but but for me, I think that was a, that was like my lowest point where I was like, I I then can't look, we can't look back and say we didn't try or I didn't try mm-hmm. or, you know, I I guess I was willing to give everything and yeah yeah. Okay, so most asked question for sure is like, how did you guys navigate the logistics? Like, what Just were your favorite. yeah? What were your rules? Oh, everybody wants to know. Oh, did like you guys you're... still have sex? No, we did. Did you date other people? No, we didn't. No. How did you like? So, COVID what were put the... a damper on a lot of plans. Yeah, right? <laughs> and to be honest with you, like, I don't think that that was part of like our se- the separation was like, we're gonna figure out if we want to be together or not. Yes, we knew that we loved each other. She loved me. I loved her. We have two kids. But it was never about like, oh, I'm going to go find somebody else or you're going to go find someone else. Yeah. It was more like a self-reflection of, am I going to be a single dad? Is she going to be a single mom? Like, I don't, yeah. Yeah, people get really into the logistics of it. And so, like, we, I think it happened in February to answer the question, like, because uh, we get so many questions on it. I think it happened in February. I went to Santa Barbara. I started sleeping yeah. at my mom's. Yeah, like three or four times a week, and you would come at like 6 a.m. I would come home because we were nesting. We didn't want to move the kids. We didn't want to disturb the kids as much as possible. And then March 20th, the schools shut down. So yeah. maybe a like month and months, a half yeah. after COVID hit. So not only did COVID hit and however you feel about COVID, but COVID was very personal for our family because it directly threatened the health of, at the time, our older child. And now we know both of them. But you say all the time that COVID is the reason we're together because you were saying that if COVID didn't force us to nest in the same house and not have any separation, because we didn't see anybody. Yeah. It took me like 12 weeks to see my mom yeah. um, that I probably would have left. And I think that's very true uh, because it just forced us to do all the work in front of each other. Yeah. Uh, so though that logistics question and to your answer, I don't think we had a lot of rules because the world shut down. <laughs> sure. Um, but I also don't know that the rules are super important. Like, sure, you can have, um, you know, yes, you should be explicit around like, are you going to date other people? Yeah. Who's going to sleep where? Um, are you going to be in therapy? Am I going to be in therapy? But I see so many of our community get caught up in the rules. Yeah. And that is also just like not the part that is that important. Like, yes, yeah. boundaries, expectations, 100%. But it is a time for you to check, like, yeah. do you want to operate in your next chapter of life solo or in a new relationship? You have to answer and do the work within yourself first because then you're just going to repeat it with someone else. Yeah. It may seem like a Disneyland pass to go and do whatever. You'll just repeat all this shit with somebody else. And then not to mention that we had kids. So I think that that's my only, like, yes, you need boundaries, you need rules, The time frame is important. We had a very untraditional separation and we would have, we would have gotten divorced had you not done what you needed to do. And then later, I feel like in the relationship, I could finally do the work that I needed to do because it was like emotionally safe enough. Well, I think also right before COVID shut us down, we were going to a couples therapist Mm -hmm. and uh, we were in session and she literally looked at me and she was like, you need to go see somebody like you have your EMDR therapy she told you she's like you need you have a lot of shit that you need to sort out and I was like no like wait did you guys start with the couples therapist after the so no no we like because I asked I asked for it I said I wanted a separation in February you said you would go so we had some sessions with Mallory and then okay and And then then it shut down everything shut down and we did like one or two maybe online or not even no and then I started seeing my you started seeing your therapist yeah so and what was messed up is she told you you need to go see an individual therapist and he was like okay like even though internally you were like f that whatever he was like, okay, I had been begging him. You're like, fuck you. Begging him to go for so long. And he yeah. blew me off. And literally in one session, she's like, go to therapy. And he was like, okay. And I was, it, it's, I was, I was angry. Sure. Like, that was not a moving moment for me. I was like, yeah. fuck both of you. Yeah. Yeah. But do you think it's just because the stakes were different? Yeah. And obviously, you hear it from a professional versus, I mean, yes, yeah, she is a professional. You're yeah, a professional. I'm your professional wife. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I don't need therapy from my wife. 
Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. And I think that was also hard to hear that somebody's literally telling you, I think you need to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're nesting, you're going to couples therapy, then individual therapy, world shuts down. You are trying to navigate it all. Second most asked question is how did you guys handle this with your kids? I think that is the biggest fear for so many people leaving of the impact on the kids, how you talk about it with the kids. So if it's okay to talk about it. so sad. (laughs) I know. Say, I see. I mean, we weren't, we didn't, we chose not to tell them. Yes, but we they knew that there was something wrong. Like, yeah. you know, I would I would be at dinner, for example, and I would just start crying or I wouldn't want to eat. And I would just hug my kids and they were like, what the hell is going on? They knew something was up. Yeah. And I think it's important that, like, you started not being able to contain your emotion. So they started seeing him be emotional. And that was very different than their first five and two years of life, like you shoved so much emotion down. You either showed anger or you were super chill and go with the flow. Like there was never really any in between a lot. Like you were happy, but you were very like laid back, but it was either anger or a version of shoved down. So our kids started seeing you be emotional all the time, unbridled. And it really freaked out our older daughter but we kind of had to just be like yep like daddy's sad mommy sad like she could feel it our son was oblivious he honestly he like he, yeah, yeah he didn't he's a covid baby he was just like yeah. this is great we're all home together <laughs> this is my dream but she really it was not only the emotionality but that you were so emotional and she thought then something was wrong so at the same time that we're navigating if we're gonna make it We're also having to correct this pattern that we didn't know we were creating with our kid. She had not seen him be emotionally available. And now she was seeing it all the time. And we couldn't say nothing's wrong. So we were like, yeah, like mommy and daddy are sad. Like mommy and daddy are having a hard time, but we love you. Like we were having to correct both things at the same time. And it was so hard. That was really hard for me. Do you feel like your different family backgrounds of like you like we just we don't talk about feelings we suck it up we do whatever to Rachel you like we're open about feelings we talk about everything do you feel like that intersected in how you handled it with your oldest I I feel like I kind of ha- I handled it because I don't know how much I feel like I kind of took the lead and then you followed yeah, I, yeah. Uh, me and my emotions are not <laughs> So now, I was like, okay, now well, your emotions no. are straight. They're sexy. They're out all the time. But back in the day, ow, it was ow. not. Yeah, it yeah. was. Uh, yeah, I feel like you just kind of like took my lead. And I mean, some of the more reparative times were us coming together to talk about how we're going to handle it with her. Because we would tell her when I would leave the house, like I was leaving for work. Yeah. I needed to go because she knew that because he yeah. would leave. She yeah. wasn't used to me leaving. Yeah. So we did start saying that, that like I was gone for work. Um, yeah, or that you were going to grandma's and yeah i was gonna go sleep at grandma's house go help with the dog yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so tell me what it was like to tell your family and then tell me what it was like to tell your friends and then tell me about their responses (laughs) well what was it like for you oh my god it was so interesting (laughs) but i want to hear your guys' story of it do you want to go first or you want me to go first you go first um for me it was hard because i have three sisters and um, and we're all very close and I had to go tell my parents as well. And for me going to tell my parents <clears throat> that I hurt her and we were going to separate was also like, I'm going to my parents and telling them, you know, like that I did something wrong, you know, yeah. because again, I've I've heard my dad say I love you like five times in my life and not a big deal. But that's what I mean. Like when you, you, talk you don't about, talk about yeah. your emotions. So like yeah. for me to go to my dad and say I fucked up or went to my mom and said this. And it's like I had to literally just say it. and Own it. Yeah. And sit in it because they're like, well, why didn't you tell us? I didn't mm-hmm. see this. And it's like. Yeah. How do you tell the people that you love the most that you're suffering inside? And I, and obviously you could, you're supposed to go tell them, but I, I couldn't. And then yeah. telling my friends, it was not fun. I mean, yeah. yeah. 
Well, and I think it's important to say, too, that your family, both of your families, are really involved in your kids' lives. Mm -hmm. And you guys, I mean, you all live very close to each other. You see each other really frequently. So I imagine, yeah. I do. (laughs) Um, So I imagine. Tell yeah, like for them, it was probably a little bit of whiplash of like, what well, we're together all the time, yeah. and maybe they knew like something was up. But to that point, my mom knew. Your I mom think knew my mom knew. Anything. Yeah, my mom was on the inside for a long time, and I think that was like very helpful to me. But she was also very real with me. Like when I said, I think, I think this is it. Like I don't think I can do this, and I would like kind of report in a similar way. I would tell you like it, things just kept escalating. You know, she said to me, she goes, I, I, she said, I completely support your decision to separate and I will always love him. He will always be my son because he is the um, father of your children. And she was like, I need to make that super clear. And I was like, yeah, because you're so close with my parents. Yeah. Um, my, I feel like my parents were supportive. I feel like your, you know, your dad is not many words, so I don't feel like he was unsupportive. <laughs> I think your mom, was surprised, not surprisingly in that, like, I wouldn't expect her to, but she was outwardly supportive of me. I'll never forget walking up our driveway, and she says, you do what you have to do. She's like, I understand. And, like, I think that was really hard for your mom, who literally is, like, you, ha- she's been with her person since 12. So she was very supportive, um, I think, you know, your family was like a mixed bag in terms of everybody else. You, what I think is the hardest thing about telling people in your life is you trigger all their shit. I could not, I wasn't prepared for people's comments and reflections. I was told, but he's such a good provider. Mm -hmm. He's such a good dad. When I would literally say, this is what happened two weeks ago. This is what happened at our son's birthday. This is what happened here. And they were like, but he, he makes good money. Like, well, but he's really good with the kids. And I was just like, I'm sorry, what? And they were also not seeing when he wasn't good with the kids, when he what? So I found myself defending myself to a lot of people because on paper, we didn't look like the couple that was going to get a separation. And we, I think we kept a lot hidden, but- When we shared this, you end up rocking other people's stuff because I'm like, hey, the way he spoke to me was not okay. I guarantee you and some of the friends I shared that with, that's how their spouses talk to them. So it messed with them. They almost had to defend it then. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or like, you know, family members, it was the same thing. Um, It was, I I think it was the judgment that I wasn't ready for, but then I had a, a lot or I had a solid number of people you included, like really come up for both of us Mm -hmm. in the best ways and be like, you guys, if this is what's best for you and your kids, like do it. Um, It's going to be hard. We'll always love you. We're never going to pick sides. Like I think we were told that a couple of times by like key friends friends, of ours. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, you trigger people's shit when you're like, I'm going to do something that you're told you never do. When you say I do, it's forever. And when you go to someone and go, yeah, this actually isn't good enough. Like I'm really miserable. I mean, people are like, well, did it ever get physical? Yeah. But did he cheat on you? But it was just like, it was, yeah. I was told so many times that it wasn't good enough why I was yeah. doing what I was doing. And I think that was like, I wasn't ready for that. That no. fucked me up. Yeah. Did you get any of that judgment? Because mm. um, I'm the woman, so yeah. I get all the it fucking wasn't, judgment. I mean, because even yeah. my, you know, my friends that I spoke to were like, is there anything we can help with? You know, they would listen to both sides of the stories. And, you know, sometimes when your boys are telling you, hey, you're wrong, that's a tough pill to swallow because yeah. I was like, yeah, my boys are going to get my back. And they're like, no, actually, you're wrong. And I'm like, fuck. Like, and I appreciate your boy for that. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, it's, yeah. It's- Isn't that so interesting, though, that people are like, no, Rachel, mm-hmm. suck it up. And they're like, yeah, Gianni, you fuck. Like, they're almost confirming it to Gianni's face, but then telling you that you should have a different response. Right, like, isn't that part so of the mental low, though? Like, yeah. it's all on us, even when it's going to fall to shit. Like, it's all on us. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So let's let's go over the let's go over the peak. When did things start shifting and changing? So you started individual therapy, which was yeah. a big deal. EMDR therapy. Yes. And you guys stopped couples when you yeah. started individual. Yeah. You were also an individual, weren't you? I was, and then I think I stopped. Yeah. And you continue to do yeah. individual EMDR from home. So do you feel like that was one of the like big pivoting points? For for me, yes, because yeah. I was dealing with a lot of things that I went through in the past and uh, that I never spoke about. Uh, 
So yeah, I feel like having those sessions, like I remember coming out of sessions, just like swollen eyes, just crying. And I would like just hold her. And it was, it was tough because I was going through this and I was going through my own stuff. So it was literally yeah. like unwrapping every single thing that you're like, I didn't want to talk about this, something that happened 10, 15 years ago. And all of a sudden I'm talking about that and I'm talking about separation. Like it was, yeah. it was yeah. a mess. And what was that like for you to then have to, well, I guess you didn't have to, but to then support the person who you're essentially saying, I can't be with you because of how much you've hurt me. But now you see him suffering while he's doing the work. No, I don't know that I did a lot of supporting because I think that even though that was a role I was used to doing in the family and with us, even before I said I wanted a separation, like we would have stuff going, we were going through stuff and I would shove my own like feelings down that like I'm alone, I'm dying in this, like this is like a self-betrayal. So when he started going outwardly through it and working through trauma, um, I don't know that I was, I don't think I was cold anymore, yeah. but I was not, um, I don't know, I wasn't super comforting because I was like, yeah, like you need to do this. Whether, whether or not we stay together or not, you need to feel all this. And you told me something super important was like, I'm not responsible for his like emotional reactions, his emotional responses. And that was like very freeing to me because I didn't, I felt like I could just have space to be like, I'm really unhappy, but out in the light and out and open. So yes, you would come out of sessions, your eyes would be bloodshot and like so swollen. I think I was there for you yeah. as much as I could be, but in no way, shape or form was I like comforting or soothing because I was just like, yes, you need to do this because even if we're not together, you need to raise these humans better. Like that gained my respect, I think, is that you, I constantly was like, I don't know if we're going to get together and you still continue to do the work until you started feeling relief. Like, I think it took you a while to feel like, oh, I'm doing this for me. I'm not just doing this for us. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Okay. So other than the therapy, what else happened in your home or outside of your home that made you both feel like, okay, like there's actual change happening. Things are shifting. The drinking, we put limits around drinking. Yeah. Big, yeah. I didn't want, I didn't want you to be drinking alone anymore. Um, I didn't want, I think we even sat like not drinking during the week. You could only drink if we were together. We talked a lot openly about the alcohol. We had not ever talked openly about yeah. the alcohol. It was just been something that's like so normalized, especially in your family. It's a part of like celebrations and parties and like culturally. And it was just making things so much worse. Yeah. And so I think I finally, you, because you were like, yes, I want to work on this. I was like, okay, you make me feel super unsafe. You're mean. And he would like not even remember. Yeah. And it wasn't that you were like wasted. We really figured out that it was also how tired you would get, how you metabolized alcohol that like was part of the problem. But we set a lot of limits around yeah. like alcohol for a long time until like we could have like trust and understanding. I remember things changed for me when you had drank and then in the morning you were like, can we sit down and talk about how that was for you? I was like, oh uh -huh. my God. Like it felt so safe and like yeah. nothing had happened. But he yeah. was like, I don't trust my memory. I want to be responsible. Like was anything said, but it meant so much to me. And that happened rep repeatedly. He would, could come the day after and be like, did anything happen? Is there anything I wasn't aware of? Um, because those are the times that like he would say messed up stuff or pressure me to have sex or then make nasty comments because I didn't want to do something or I didn't want to talk. And you were just like, if I'm doing it, tell me. Let's like it was full. There was no more. There was nothing we couldn't talk about. And I felt like that's when things really started to change for me in terms of like wanting to stay. Yeah. Yeah. What did you notice change? Because as we talked about before, like, you know, Rach was part of the cycle right. in some way. Like, what did you notice that started shifting and changing that was healthier for you or made it more of a relationship that you felt happy in? I mean, I think that when she told me that she didn't feel safe around me was also a tough pill to swallow because yeah. she's my wife, yeah. you know? Yeah. And the last thing I want to do is then show my daughter that this is a safe place. Yeah. Obviously, she didn't see it, but I thought to myself... What if she was in this position? Yeah. Um, yeah, we wouldn't be encouraging her to stay. Yeah. And then, I don't know. I, I just feel like as we, because it wasn't, you know, like we would have tough conversations. And 
sometimes we would then not talk for like hours or just hold each other or sometimes we would lay in bed and just cry together and like literally just cry and we would wake up the next morning oh, so like so i f- i feel that um once i realized that she started to trust me because i was doing xyz whatever work that she was being open you know like with softer, me softer yeah. like yeah. yeah and i guess for for like i didn't realize that even little small things meant so much to her and i mean i'm super chill passive i'm like yeah whatever go with the flow but with her it's different like every little word of encouragement or affirmations it's like she needs that and i didn't realize how much she needed that and whether it was thank you for doing this uh thank you for doing that for me it's like that's part of our job as parents as providers for you know so it was hard for me to slowly soften up i guess yeah like express it yeah, yeah. and say like thank you and i see this i, yeah, yeah. I appreciate this yeah I just love you guys so much. (laughs) Okay. All right. So, G, I want you to answer this first. How long would you say that it took for there to be actual change that you both were, like, softening towards each other and were like, okay, this could could work. Like, we're going to be okay. I mean, to be honest with you, everything was, like, a blur, you know? Like, it all happened so fast, but... You know, I think for me, I think it took like at least like six months. Uh, um, And going back to like the question about like, you know, when you guys separated, did you have sex? Like it was, I had to like build that trust again, almost as if we were dating again. Yeah. Yeah, Sex was such a like, no. Yeah. And it wasn't even like I... Because for me, I was like, I don't even want it because it felt so detached when I finally mm-hmm. realized that she was just doing it to do it. And I was like, oh, that doesn't feel good. Yeah. yeah. So it took a long time for for her to gain trust in me. And it almost felt like I had to, like, swoon her again. You know, like, hey, yeah. we're dating again. Oh, you um, did good. You swooned. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, easy and it wasn't fun. Um, you wouldn't do this again? No. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I mean, and it's just a lot of work. And yeah. if you put in the time and the energy, then it's a hundred percent worth it. But it's also, it's not going to fix if you're not going to do anything, whether it's me doing my part, her doing her part, it's not going to fix if, if we're both not doing it together. Yeah. I, that's my, yeah. Okay. So six months, lots of hard work until you started feeling that tangible change. What would you say? Uh, I think when you started, like, just really acknowledging and respecting my experience, like, change for me looked like when I was like, hey, you said that this way and it made me feel this way. And you were like, yes. Like, even if you didn't agree that, well, let me backtrack. I think a big turning point for me was agreeing that there had been verbal abuse and it was abusive at some level because you were like, hey— I'm not an abuser. I'm not like a predator. Like I'm not hitting you. And I was like, yeah. And guess what? Like I grew up with that. This is just as bad in some other areas. So for me, having the acknowledgement that like, yeah, emotionally and verbally, what I'm doing is not okay. And it is abusive was like a big turning point for me. But what change looked like is when we would talk and you'd make a comment or I would make a comment and it was just like, yeah, if that hurt you, it was enough to stop things. It doesn't mean... We had like an amazing conversation after, but safety was being established and like, yep, time out. I no longer had to convince you that what you were saying is hurtful. That was so huge because I felt so crazy for so long. And then him going like, yeah, I, he would start catching himself and being like, I said that, that was shitty. Can I try again? And like, yeah, I didn't forget it right away. Um, but they happened less and less. Like that has been, even today, even now, like sometimes when you're like, that doesn't hurt. I'm like, it is my experience. Like, it's still a wound where I'm like, it is my experience. It, I am saying like, you know, if you like tickled me or something, but that's what changed to me was you were just like, yeah, like you picked our relationship over you being right or your ego or your opinion. You were like, I care more that even if I don't agree with you, that this is genuinely how you feel. Like, 
that was like, I'm like, oh my God, I feel, I think I could feel safe with him again. Yeah. Um, that was what I thought, like, okay, yeah. I think we might, we might make it. Yeah. And I think it's important to say that, I mean, even after you guys decided that you weren't going to be divorcing or, you know, that separation period was over, like it still took a lot of work. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would say from the outside, I was going to say, what would you say, Stace? I would say like, it has maybe even taken to the last like year, year and a half. What is time? I'm like, I don't, yeah, I, maybe, I don't think you're wrong. Yeah. To like really feel like. Yeah. At least from obviously yeah. Rachel's well, you know point everything. of view. I was gonna say yeah. you know everything. There's know. not there's not much of a, la- a t- time lag. But I lag. think it's but I think it was the trust in the change because like Gianni was doing certain things that were positive, and you would even be like, uh, yeah, oh he yeah. He told he's gonna take care of like the lunches, and he's or you know like getting the kids ready for school. And I said I'm out, and he's doing it. Hmm. Like, you know, like, gotta give Yeah, this you'd time. give me shit. Like, you'd be like, why don't you just enjoy that there's change? And I was like, yeah, I don't know how long it's going to last. Yeah. You're like, that's okay. Like, she was like your <laughs> cheerleader on the sidelines once you started making changes. And even, like, you know, with sex and stuff, I feel like we had to do a restart because you had sense. felt like— you. I think you felt super bad and horrible that I had been— doing it when I didn't want to do it. So we, I think trust also felt weird for you. Like you were, you were like, I trusted that you were saying yes before to hear that that was a no. So I think trust had to be reestablished both ends. But I remember going in the office to Stace and being like, yeah, like he was just like, let's have a night about you and you tell me exactly what you want and don't want. And like, it didn't matter if you got off or not. I was like, I don't know what that was, that that's going to last. And Stacey was like, yeah, that that sounds amazing. Like, you mean he was yeah. just focused on your pleasure and then you, like, it was just safe and then you went to bed. I was like, yeah, whatever. It's not going <laughs> to last. Like, there was just, but you kept doing that in an area that was so precious and already hard for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Stacy like, was the one being like, it's okay to enjoy this. And if it goes away, that's fine. Then you can leave. But maybe we enjoy it. And I was like, fine, you guys are dumb (laughs) feelings are dumb but that ripple effect right like it's i think that's so important for people to hear that once things feel safe it's not just going to be like fixed and we're good like it takes years and even still now it can those wounds can be triggered but you have a healthier way of coming back together and you have me telling you to knock it the fuck off (laughs) yeah um all the time yeah okay all right so if somebody was contemplating separation in the beginning phases of it what would you tell that couple or what would you tell that person about this journey? What do you wish you would have heard or what advice would you have for for them? I think I would have done it sooner than later. I wish I had spoken up earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's important to do it in person as regulated as possible because I still feel badly about that that I did over the phone while you were at work. That's my own avoidant attachment stuff coming out right there. Um, yeah, I would do it sooner than later. And there is a, a power and a freedom, like this truth that I feel changed my entire life and is the reason we have this new version of our marriage now. And I can never unsee that. Like, I think I told Stace a lot, like I woke up and I never want to be asleep again. So even if we didn't stay together, I knew I was going to be okay. And that like what I wanted was okay. Like that was the, such an incredible feeling. Yeah. So speaking up, earlier will open your eyes to like the life that you deserve to live whether or not it's with your person and it could change everything and change shit for your kids totally but it, earlier is better because you can have a completely new life whether you're together or not um i wish i'd done it earlier yeah um for me i would just be you have to be honest with yourself um is the marriage something that you want you know, like you have to also be vulnerable. You have to think, I'm going to see things from a different perspective, from someone else's point of view, and I might not like it because I think I'm right, you know, and you might be wrong. And from I, I think you, again, you have to, to ask yourself, what do I want? And then you have to be honest and open to possibly changing your behavior. You're like, or, are you willing to do the work though? Yeah. A thousand percent. And if you are telling yourself, well, like I did, I was like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. And then I did it whether I wanted, you know, like I did it because I wanted to and it was hard. But I also didn't want to quit because I knew that it would eventually get better. And 
hopefully we would get better and we would be together. So the other thing is, is once you start doing the work and you start to see all these nasty things, don't stop because whether we are going to be together or not, at least I will be a better person yes. dealing with yes. all the other stuff. And You'll be happier. Yes, a thousand percent. Mm. So be open, I guess. Be open. <laughs> be open. And don't Bumper stop sticker. when it gets hard. No. Yeah. When it comes to because personal growth. Because when I think also when you sit in your own shit and it's hard, I think there's a different thing that it's like like survival instincts. Like mm -hmm. you sit in it and you're like, wow, like what can I do? What can I not do? How is this going to change? How are we going to move forward? How are we not going to move forward? Um and then having those hard conversations all the time. It's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. What about particularly for men? Is there anything that mm. you think, whatever, whether it's societal pressures, cultural stuff, like for men that, I don't know, that you wish you, some some other gentleman would have told you or a key piece of advice for the lads out there listening. The I, lads. The lads. Um, I just think as society, like, you, as a man, like, you don't talk about your feelings. You know, you hold everything down. You know, even at a young age, you were taught, like, you're the alpha. Like, you know? Um, so I think that whether you think you're an alpha or not or whatever, like, just put your ego aside for, you know, someone that you love and like, it's okay to not to like show your emotions, you know? It's okay to show your emotions. Yeah. It's so that would be my biggest thing is like, you're going to feel shit that maybe you don't want to feel. <laughs> and it's like, oh my God, like this is weird or I don't like this. I'm not, you know, I'm not supposed to show this, but it will benefit you and your partner in the long run. Mm. Well said. Well said. Whew. All right, y'all. That was lovely. Is there anything else you want to say about separation or how things are now before we get into the DC and the DMs? No, let's do it. All right. Gianni is on the hot seat. For the so these are the specific questions that were directed just to you, Gianni. So sit back and enjoy. None of them are too, none of them are too intense. All right. So we can also talk about, we talked about this one off camera, but the first DC and the DMs is, Gianni, did you enjoy? being alone if so what did you enjoy and if not what did you miss uh i did not enjoy it i you hate was, being alone not that i hate being alone <laughs> but like literally my life was crumbling and yeah. i was like how the fuck am i gonna put these pieces together um and again it wasn't only about our relationship it was our kids our family our house like, how are we going to put all these pieces back together? Mm -hmm. And how are we going to make it work? Um, so, no, I wasn't happy. <laughs> and it was not easy. Um, but I also think that it was the, the our, uh, like, what we were going through is very different. Like, I didn't cheat on her. She didn't cheat on me. It was a very different separation. So I'm just going to speak to what we went through. So, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you don't like being alone. Oh, so, sure. Yeah. It's an intro <laughs> being alone. Okay. How was your sex drive impacted by the separation? Um, I mean, during the, like, I don't. Sure. During. I think you initially wanted reaffirmation, like re, I think you wanted to attach during sex. When thing, when we, when it was established, at least is how I remember it, when it was established that like, okay, we were going to work on it. I had, like, 1% willingness to do this. remember, like, sitting on the front porch, um, like, talking about it. I don't know why. That's, like, burned into my brain. Very quickly after, I noticed that, like, you did want to have sex to, like, reaffirm yeah. that things were good. Got and it. I was like, hell no. Yeah. Um, but then once that was made clear and, like, we started talking about why, I feel like you were incredibly respectful. Yeah. And then on board because I also shared what was going on, like, in terms of I had not wanted to and want to, but... 
Yeah, I feel like in the beginning when I was like, okay, we're going to try, yeah, you were like, like yeah. yeah, and I was like, oh, no, 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 and you were pissed, and then a thousand percent. you were like, I get, like, I don't, I really had to connect the dots for him that the, it's all connected. Yeah. Yeah, you were like, let's do it, and I was like, mm-hmm. you're, you're, miss, you're missing yeah. something. I was like, yeah. I'm going to go hang out with Stacey now. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Gianni, on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being least confident, 10 being most confident, how confident were you that you guys would get back together? Zero. Oh. I just, there was just so much going on that I I didn't know. I knew the damage that was done. I just didn't know how we were going to repair it. Yeah. Um, and that obviously she had to do work. I had to do work. We had to work together. Uh, but most importantly, I had to do the most work because I had to repair and repair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Last question. What did you learn most about yourself from the separation? I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. A lot. More specific, please. <laughs> um, I don't. I. I mean, I guess... For what I've learned for myself is that it's okay to be open and vulnerable and talk about, you know, I didn't like the way you spoke to me. Mm -hmm. I don't like when you say this, you know, I don't like this. Just saying that is literally, it stops from just shoving it and then exploding. Yes. So it's like, for example, you know, why didn't you do this? It's like, well, don't talk to me like that. Um, Because then what I would do is I would be like, oh, I'm going to get her later, like whatever. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, a bomb goes off. And then you'd be like, hey, it sucks that you didn't do that. Yeah. You know, blah, blah, blah. Like you're allowed, you, but you're allowed to do that. I don't think you ever, it was either you shove it down or it came out nasty. Well, yeah, I shoved a lot of Mm -hmm. things down. I think that's something you learned is like you could also say, you were allowed to express yourself. A thousand percent. With respect. <laughs> yeah. Do you like how both of us are like, <laughs> da, 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 with respect? Yeah. Okay. You're so right. lucky there's two of us yeah. in your life. Wow. What an episode. I appreciate both of you guys' vulnerability as always. Thank this was you, so Stacey. lovely. Thank I think you, Stacey Oprah. Oh my God. You're welcome. This is my Oprah moment. So thank you for good giving job. me you that did a good opportunity. Job. <laughs> All right. If you are blown away with their vulnerability like I am, please make sure to leave us some love. If you have any questions, maybe leave them in the comment section of wherever you listen to this too, and we'll see if we can get to them. Um, But hit subscribe so you do not miss our next episode. And we appreciate you as always. We will see you next week for the Decoding Couples podcast.